Hello and thank you for listening to the very first In The Stands podcast. You're listening to Ash, and I'll be joined today by Joan. We'll be talking about how rubbish the January transfer window was. Approximately 30 million was spent in this window, which is down from the two previous years of 170 and 150 million. Why do you think spending was so low this year, Joan? Well, credit crunch has clearly had a big effect on Premiership clubs. Um, quite a lot of clubs are going into debt, like Pompey can't pay their players, United, Liverpool both struggling. Um, <clears throat> you have clubs in the Championship like Crystal Palace and Watford who are in trouble. So a good idea might be to get onto your website then, Joe. That will make them a bit of money. It would. It's www.iamatipster.com. And basically, that's a quick, fire way of making money. It's a little spin-off from In The Stands. Joe's the tipster. And uh, he started his own website telling you about all different sports. Yeah, not just football. You can find anything on there. There's a daily race, horse racing blog. And there'll be any events coming up. Like we've got the Super Bowl. We had the Australian Open. We'll have Wimbledon, golf events, you name it, we'll have it. I'm sure you're a bit sceptical about how good Joe's uh, website will be. But Joe, how about the opening week? How successful were you? Well, the first two days we had seven tips. Five of them were successful. The, fol- the following day we had one out of two, so 50% strike rate. It's pretty impressive. I mean, that's carried on through this week. No, I'm not saying that everybody should be gambling, but it's well worth visiting the website www.iamthetipster.com Anyway, let's get into it, Joe, and let's start off with the Premier League transfers. We've got the big one at Arsenal, Sol Campbell returns. Um, I think he's a good signing because he's experienced and he'll help the kids out. Yeah. But as a player, I don't like him. What, you think at 35 he's, he's past it? He's just too slow now. I think you might be right, to be honest, but only time will tell. But like you say, behind the scenes he might be more useful than anything. He got completely exposed the other day and was lucky not to get sent off. Who was that against? Uh, Aston Villa. I think it was Agbonlahor. Oh. Made him look like a right tip. Agbonlahor is rapid though. He's still a tip. <laughs> <laughs> Can I keep that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other move that Arsenal brought in was uh, Samuel Galindo, just a youngster. <laughs> no much to say on that front. Uh, Villa, no movement there. Nice and boring. And then... Uh, We've got Birmingham, they brought in uh, Sporting Hee They he brought in the vice captain, Mikel. be interesting to see whether he has actually any influence, but he's supposed to be quite handy. And then we've got Craig Gardner in from Villa for three million. Pretty good. He can play at the back end in midfield, can't he? Yeah, he's uh, a product of the Villa youth. Good young Brummy lad. He's gone to the play uh, he's gone to the team that he supported as a kid. He has a bit of youth to their agent squad. Birmingham should have about Mid-table finish, weren't they? Nothing more. They're on a good <coughs> run. Thanks for the burp, Joe. Keeping that in, by the way. It was interesting to see that he started on my bench and he kept his un- unchanged side again. It's just for continuity, isn't it? Yeah. Then we've got Blackburn. They brought in Basturk, the older Turk. He, uh, he got released from Stuttgart. I think he'll be an interesting buy because he's, he's known across Europe and uh, Big Sam has a way with old men, doesn't he? So... Fingers has got away with the kids. <laughs> Alan's has got away with the odd man. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's proven track records, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty sure it's the league the same what I did. And we've got Bolton. Bolton have had some interesting signings, shall we say, this transfer window. They've obviously brought in manager Owen Coyle. Seems like a sideways move, doesn't it? Owen Coyle to, from Burnley. But he'll stay up with Bolton, but I don't think Burnley would have stayed up. But they've brought in Jack Wilshire and Vladimir Weiss, two wide men. And uh, youth as well should be very quick, and they sh- should add an extra dimension to their game. Yeah, a different, totally different style of football. I was very disappointed with Bolton in their first games against Arsenal because they were they were basically thugs. You, but you play with what you've got. Well, like, that, that's a fair comment, and that's probably why he's uh, he's added to it. You can't blame Coyle for that because Coyle at Burnley played football. And they organised, but we did play football. Well, let's move on to Burnley then. They brought in Brian Laws. That's on the cheap. They're going down. He's a pile of shit, mate. <laughs> the only person who's worse than him is Paul Sturrock. And that is only marginal. Oh, Joe, what makes you say that Paul Sturrock is worse? Some fucking Plymouth fan. Oh, right. sorry, we were Wednesday when he left. One place above Plymouth. That's how good Laws is. How he's in the Premiership, I don't know. It's, it's the Burnley chairman doing everything on the cheap. And uh, they brought in Leon Court, championship player. 
I mean, in fairness, they've brought in Dave Nugent, who's decent. This uh, Nimani guy looks handy. Nicky Weaver can do a job for you, backing up Jensen. And then uh, Jack Corp as a youngster. It's fair enough, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's nothing. It's no premiership quality, you maybe. Then uh, Chelsea, no movements into Chelsea. A couple out, but nothing worth noting. Then Everton brought in Landon Donovan. Landon, you're rubbish. You know who you are. We know who you are. But he's been in good form, in fairness. He's done all right, Evan. But he, he's not going to stay, is he? Surely not. They're not going to make that mistake. I think they will. I think he'll be alright. I think I think they will. Be in, they need squad players, and he's a half decent squad player. I've been following. I've been following the MLS closely this year, though, and he's been horrendous. Like you were saying to me the other day, it's not necessarily that he's. It's just that he's a he's a decent player in a group of really bad players. Yeah. The standard of the MLS is really low. Let's be honest. Yeah, you do. You you play to some players play as well as who they're playing against. But he's, he's performed well in the Premier League, and um, I guess Everton fans are hoping that continues. But then, uh, who's the other loan signing that they brought in, eh? He's even worse than Donovan. <laughs> the player equivalent of Brian Laws. He's horrendous. You're talking about Philippe Senderos. But it's good the move for him, because he'll uh, be able to get game time before he... Uh... No, he won't. No, he won't. They'll play kids in front of them. As soon as they have a few training <laughs> sessions, realise that he's an absolute <laughs> twat with a bald head. Looks like, oh, I can't even say that because there's lots of people with bald heads out there who read our site. I'm, I'm balding. <laughs> I'm balding, Joe. There's nothing wrong with a balding <laughs> man. You. But Philip Sanderos is pretty rubbish. And let's just leave it at that. But the interesting thing with Everton is Lucas Neal, they signed him on a free at the, in summer and he's already gone to Galatasaray for three quarters of a million. And I'll get back onto Galatas right in a minute. I think that was quite. Like, they didn't want to say them, but they did it for the player because he's got a, is it a two year contract or two and a half year contract. There's an extra chance for him to get some football, earn a bit more money before he retires. Yeah. Fulham, Fulham's been probably the main hub, isn't it, of the uh, the transfer window this this week? Yeah, quite surprising. Uh, Stefano Okaka, Italy under 21. He looks quite handy. Here's, yeah. a, pi- here's a video. Of his goal that he scored, the last one that he scored for Roma. Ooh, nice back heel. And uh, they've also brought in Nicky Shorey because uh, conchesky has been a bit injury prone this season, shall we say. Then Hull, 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 Hull. I, I don't understand what Phil Brown's doing. I think Phil Brown should have been sacked a long, long time ago. He won't He's, get sacked now. He, really. he won like thir- three games in 30 games, didn't he, in 2009. But he had his friend, Duffin, yeah. in charge. Yeah, kept his job and now Pearson's stuck with him just because he's managed to get a few decent results but now his dressing room could fall to pieces now that he's brought in Amezaki yeah but when we got those results it coincided with Billard returning because Billard is so important to that team that's a fair point Billard's now out at the moment but he should be returning in the next few weeks I think Zaki could be a, a man to uh, make or break that team he's been proven as a disruptive influence of other it's been proven as a disruptive influence in other places, and I think he'll pretty much do the same here. But he can do a job for you. Liverpool, probably the best signing in the entire transfer window, I think. Yeah. Maxi Rodriguez from Atletico Madrid on a free transfer. He's 29 years old, and he's a top, top international. Here's a goal that he scored at the World Cup. That, that's, that's how I first heard about him. Anything to say on the boy, Joe? Well, he's just new, so he'll be eager to actually play instead of Barber or... Riera or one of those other misfits at Liverpool who don't really want to be there. And uh, Rafa can't complain about a chief executive buying this one because that's his own one. Then Man City have also made an interesting signing, two interesting signings in fairness, this uh, transfer window. Good old Paddy V returns to the Premier League. Patrick Vieira. Quality signing. Absolutely brilliant. He'll still do a job. He'll tighten them up. He's a leader more than anything. But he's just, he's just brilliant. He's, he's perhaps a man with experience for help with the... You say, you said exactly the same thing about Sol Campbell, but in a completely negative light. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same point. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> he's adding a bit of experience and a bit of knowledge to the team that is relatively new and hasn't won anything, whereas the man's won practically everything in the game. He's just a classy, classy player. 